And we are live, I think. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our uh, latest Ask Ally self-publishing salon. I'm here with the wonderful Dama from Hungary. Hi, Dama. Hi, Orna. Hi, everyone. I'm really Hi. glad to be here. Great, great to be here again. And do let us know, folks, where you're calling in from. And um, we have a very interesting show for you this, this evening. Um, we've been talking uh, in the last few months about the effect that lockdown has been having on poets who, particularly poets who have relied on um, gigs and slams and poetry events, uh, physical, to um, publicize and market their poetry and the way in which a lot of those events have moved online and the way in which this session that we do here once a month focuses very much on um, book publishing and digital book publishing. So we were talking about how important that is, what a great um, change is happening in this sphere. And then off we went and Dalma has been doing lots of work this month trying to see what is the extent of this? So, Dana, for those who don't know, just just fill folks in a little bit about you and your role in Publish Drive, first of all. And then if you could share with us uh, some pretty exciting um, statistics that you have about um, what's happening in the poetry book publishing world. Sure. Um, so for the past couple of months, uh, Publish Dry, which is uh, a distribution aggregator, meaning that you can access over 400 stores and thousands of libraries through uh, through our um, distribution platform. Um, we have incredible amounts of data. So we have over 10,000 um, uh, 10, users who distribute through us. And uh, we've been focusing on putting out uh, data for people to see how much digital distribution is growing and digital sales are growing. So I've looked at the data uh, for poetry in particular. Um, uh, I've been looking at data from January 2020 until the end of May. Um, so let me share with you some very quick sales data about where uh, poetry is selling, how much it has grown over the month, and what are the best price ranges. So basically, how you can price your book the best way, uh, what is selling the most. So compared to January, uh, just in February, uh, there was a little bit of a decline, but between February and March, there was a 43% growth and after that, between March and um, March and April, or uh, yes, between March and April, there was a 58% growth. Uh, so overall, that's already a huge number. So and was that 58% on the previous month? I should say yes, on I should, the previous month. On the previous month, so growth on growth. Yeah. Um, I should explain to listeners who may be wondering how many books is that? Um, <laughs> that we'll never know <laughs> because, yes. like, like pretty much every uh, company in this business, Publish Drive doesn't share sales data for. I presume it's for commercial competitive reasons. Yes, exactly. So th thank you, Orna, for explaining that. I, I didn't put it that way. But yes, that's why I can share with you uh, growth numbers in sense of percentages, but uh, exact copies and exact sales numbers, I cannot. Um, and uh, as the crisis is slowing down a little bit, there have been a little bit of a decline in the growth. So between uh april and may there was a 20 percent uh, decline between the sales but if we just look at the numbers from uh february to may there was a all over a 73 percent growth in wow. poetry numbers so that's that's huge uh, is and, huge and we've experienced this kind of growth in every single genre, but uh, particularly 
uh, for poetry, this this was definitely something huge because if you only see um, compared to, for example, science fiction, the growth wasn't this pronounced. So uh, from February to May, it was still a huge number, uh, around forty uh, percent, but not seventy-three. So yeah, it's this is definitely a no, it's fantastic. A and the reason we're talking about this is we want um, poets who are listening to realize that poetry book publishing in this way is now a growth business. And you, you'll hear a lot of people saying, and, and I know you can't give figures, but um, you'll hear a lot of people saying that poetry books don't sell. But this is actually a notion of the past. And we've discussed that on previous shows. So not going to talk too much about that tonight. What we're going to focus on tonight is how does a poet best get themselves distributed to as many bookstores as possible all over the world? Because um, from other data that you have, I know people who, who distribute most widely are those who mm -hmm. do best. So yes. yeah. Yes. So yes. Um, this is very much going to be your show, Dalma. I'm going to ask you questions <laughs> about distribution because you are our, uh, you know, you're the book distribution expert. And I suppose let's start there. What is the best strategy for poetry book distribution? Is it as simple as that? Be be everywhere. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just as you said before, the best way to distribute is to be present as many platforms as you possibly can. And throughout the show, we're going to explain, explain what are the different types of platforms that you can access, but that's, that's further on the show. Okay, that's fantastic. So first rule, folks, uh, if you're thinking of putting your, your books up there, don't just think about one um, platform, think about as many platforms as possible. What else do, do people, do poets need to think about right at the start? Uh, first of all, you need to decide what uh, is going to be the format that you're going to distribute. Um, you have your uh, poems and you can decide to distribute in an ebook format. Uh, you can decide to do parallel in a print on demand, uh, so essentially a print uh, distribution, and uh, in an audio format. So uh, let me just, you know, very quickly, briefly uh, say some things about these different formats. So ebook formatting is growing and growing, or, or I would say ebook formats, um, um, preference for ebook formats is growing. Uh, so just in 2019, $2 billion of sales have been made only in ebooks in the US. So that's, that's a huge number. And as I explained to you just uh, before, uh, during the crisis, uh, a lot of people realized that uh, cons uh, consuming books uh, digitally can be just as enjoyable as in a print format. And uh, for, um, for poets, um, this is probably the easiest way to create your book. So that's probably, uh, you know, the... Uh, the the least expensive and the easiest way to create uh, create a, uh, create a book that you can distribute. Um, the second one that I uh, told you is print on demand. So basically, what is print on demand? Just uh, very quickly. Um, so print on demand is you essentially have to uh, convert the file, the ebook file that you made into a print on demand format. There are specifics, I will not go into that per, per se, but what happens is that you distribute to those digital stores that you would essentially put your ebook format there, and people can on a click demand that they would basically get your book in a print format. And only that one copy is going to be made by the printer, and that's going to be shipped. Uh, so you do not have to print out numerous amounts of copies that you need to store after that. So there are no uh, costs uh, that goes into storage and reclaiming those copies that were not sold at the, at the bookstore. It's just basically one click. Um, and it's 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 
really good for a number of reasons. For example, uh, currently in English speaking and EU countries, approximately one, um, 160 million people still prefer to read in print. So uh, this is kind of a hybrid version of print and digital in a way, uh, I would say. Audio, yes, because, yeah, because very sorry. often when people say digital publishing, they think ebooks, but actually the three yeah. formats that we're talking about here are digital formats. Um, exactly. More, more correctly. Yeah, just nerd, nerdish publishing definitions <laughs> there, people. OK, <laughs> so, yeah, audiobooks. Talk to us about audiobooks. Yes. Yeah, so audio is growing. Uh, it is said to be the golden age of audiobooks. Major publishers have confirmed that one out of 10 books sold is an audiobook uh, right now, and uh, it's growing and growing. And since poetry is incredibly lyrical, I would say that that's probably a really good format for a lot of poets to think about, to put, put out their uh, volume of poetry out there. But this is probably one of the most expensive formats as well to made uh, because production can be expensive. You can find a production company that would uh, uh, make your book, book into an audiobook uh, at a cheaper price. But I would say start with an ebook, uh, try out the print on demand format as well. And then you can, if you have the capital for it, you can go into the audio as well. I would definitely encourage you to do so. So that's a great kind of recap. And, and I know that a lot of our poets will already be aware of the different formats. But I also know that a lot of poets who have been, uh, you know, as we said at the beginning of the show, concentrating really on physical books and uh, doing what they've done for a very long time, which is kind of print off um runs to take to their physical um events may not be as familiar with that and may not know how easy it is but essentially once you've decided on your formats and and i think it's really important to point out as well you know false wars can be set up between ebook and print particularly and and audio should i do this one or that one or the other one the, the thing is, again, as well as being everywhere, be in every format as soon as you can, recognising yeah. that we all have limitations of money, of time, of resources, but just that that's your ultimate aim, that you will actually get into as many formats as possible. And if you love um, reading your own work, then that is definitely an advantage, I think, that indie poets have um, for, for the audiobook. So now let's talk about the sales channels and the different kinds of sales channels through which these books are going to be um, brought out to, to readers. And folks, if you have any questions that you want to ask specifically about anything that's arising here uh, around distribution, just please do, do give us your questions. Sure. So, um... We do at Publish Drive have kind of a system in differentiating between the different uh, sales channels. And I will call them sales channels because not each one of them are stores per se. So um, I would say that there are major global retailers. That's one of them. Uh, it means essentially Amazon, Apple, Google Play, Kobo, Barnes & Noble, Gardeners, Ingram, so all of these. And what are the benefits of putting your uh, putting your books there? If so, what I would say generally, if you're not listed on each of these, your book is not essentially published uh, because most readers uh, would first check these. And I'm not saying all of all readers would check these, but if uh, they are searching for your book because they heard about it somewhere or they've seen an Instagram post that you did about your volume, they will put it on Google. And if they do not find it there, then it's going to be a problem for you. So that's why I would say that you should be listed there. Um, and just consider some of these numbers, uh, 1.4 billion Apple devices and 2.4 five million hundred users are around the world. So the, those are numbers that you cannot really uh, cannot really argue with 
And adding to this, just the statistics that I um, did at the beginning um, of the show, uh, what we've seen in Publish Drive is that Apple is the best uh, for poets all throughout this uh, the six months that I've 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 seen. So that's one of the reasons that you you should put your book in Apple. So that's 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 a that's, that's a, good a tip. yes that's a good tip. So the second one is library providers. So the way it works is that there are huge library providers like Overdrive or Biblioteca or Hoopla. Um, and what they do is that either they buy your book uh, or basically you list and the libraries who are connected to these providers are requesting your book for their readers. So it's listing either listing them in their catalogs. Um, what is very, very beneficial here is that there is um, a major number of people who are first checking their libraries um, for potential books in poetry. So just in uh, the US, there are roughly 135 million potential readers yearly who go to libraries. And um, Particularly in the case of poetry, uh, libraries are interesting because generally um, 14 to 35 year old women are the largest group who read poetry. And uh, these, this is the num th these are uh, the people who go to libraries because they are college students, because they are stay at home moms or uh, very active in the community and they go to their communal library or they go to their college library and check out library, uh, check out poetry books. Uh, and sometimes these are the people who are the most open to new voices and indie books. So that's why I would definitely um, encourage people to, to go and list for list to libraries, their, their titles. Absolutely. And the other thing about that age group and um, the younger part of that age group, to, you know, the poetry, biggest poetry demographic um, consumers of poetry um, is that, you know, it's at that age uh, that you are most open to writing as well as exactly. reading poetry. You know, there, that is a lot of us have the experience of writing in our teens then stopping and then coming back to to writing yes. poetry again much later on and um, so yeah grabbing grabbing them early also is a great is, <laughs> is a great idea and and also libraries are just fantastic you know they exactly. are just the most wonderful way to to um get your book to readers that you simply can't get to any other way and a lot of of indie authors don't realize that you you are paid for these because just because the library distributes free doesn't mean that every library libraries do actually purchase the books they don't exactly. just it's not it's not that you're giving the books free to libraries so i think just important to, to, to point that out Definitely. Okay, so that's our second cast. So we've got the big kind of the big global uh, people that we're kind of very familiar with and the library channels. What other channels should we be thinking about in terms of distributing? Um, the third one uh, is our reader subscription services. Now, these are the newest uh, forms of uh, sharing your work or spreading your work. Uh, these are like Kindle Unlimited, Script, uh, Bookmate, Storytel, or 24 Symbols. So um, I would say the easiest way to describe them is Netflix for books. So that's that's probably, even though some people, especially some of these channels, do not like <laughs> the comparison, but that's the easiest way to say. Um, and just as you uh, talked about uh, before, uh, the the 14 to 18 age group or 14 to 35 age group is the likeliest to go to these uh, reader subscription services and pay a flat fee amount per month to, an, uh, to read an unlimited amount of books or to listen to an unlimited amount of audiobooks. 
um, because they are power readers. A lot, a lot of them are power readers. And for them to just for the price of one book to reach unlimited amounts or read unlimited amounts of books is uh, it's just a huge boost. So um, there is a, a growing number of people. For example, Script has uh, more than 1 million active subscribers, even though they started in 2015. So... For example, I started to read um, poetry digitally through script. So, uh, and and how would most of the indie poets that I, I found that I find they are fantastic and how I uh, found basically these new voices was through um, uh, reading subscription services. It's great because it allows you to, to look at a lot of stuff without... Exactly. Uh, buying up front necessarily and then if you love the author then you can go on to kind of buy their actual books and maybe their print book as well or their audiobook books but the subscription services are great for those of us who are hungry readers can you talk <laughs> a tiny bit before you leave that sales channel about how the payment works there i think a lot of people are familiar mm -hmm. with the K ku payout which is kind mm -hmm. of pay pages read um which yeah, on short slim um poetry volumes doesn't really add up to you know all, all that much money mm -hmm. but um how how does payment work on so, say 24 signals or some of these other mm -hmm. subscription services um most of them are a little familiar uh to uh to K uh kindle unlimited um and i'm not exactly sure uh about the comparison but um after um I, I would say that after 10%, um, you would definitely get paid. And after that, there are, and this, uh, this differs to each of the different sales channels, there are um, segments of payment. So not after the pages, but basically to percentages. And there, then there are um, differing layers, I would say, of, of payment. So okay. not pages but um yeah basically segments for yeah so percentages sections. that that would work yes. better for for short books like like poetry exactly books. exactly okay. exactly yeah great so then what have we got what's our what's our third category of sales channel for poetry books uh yes yeah, so the the last one i would mention uh is regional stores so regional stores uh are like CMPCIE, which is uh, in China, or Tolino in Germany, or Dibuk, um, which is Slovakia, Hungary. These are some of the channels that we reach. That's why I uh, I picked them. But there are definitely a larger number of uh, stores. Um, so why, as an English speaker or an English writer, you would be interested in uh, distributing to these different channels? Because as I am not a native English <laughs> speaker, I still consume, uh, consume poetry in English um, and did so for the past 15 years. Uh, and there are a lot of other people like me. And uh, just in China, there are 400 hundred million people who speak English. And that's a few readers. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying each one of them are a lover of poetry, but still only if just one percent. I mean <laughs> it's humongous. Yeah. It's it, hard it's to humongous. even imagine. Yeah. Exactly. Fantastic. Exactly. So th these are um, just uh, briefly mentioning all of the different stores and why is it beneficial for you to list your book there. Um, yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah, fantastic. So let's get back to that question of I sound so mercenary, but let's let's talk a little bit more about um, 
payment, you know, and how it works differently, depending on whether you go direct. I mean, some of these stores, none of us are going to go direct to. I think yeah. we, we have to use an aggregator. I don't mean to say that in a, in a way like it's a terrible thing, but, you know, you just simply wouldn't be able to reach them without it. You'd be crazy to, to, to even try. But perhaps some of them we might want to go directly. Um, so talk to me a little bit about, about how it works if you're going mm -hmm. direct or if you're using an aggregator mm -hmm. and why you might do one or the other. Sure. So um, I'm not necessarily expressing my personal opinion. I'm just saying how we see uh, authors work. So a lot of people, for example, go directly to Amazon. This is this is something that most people do because it's such a humongous and such an impressive uh, platform that you want the um, I would say you would want to control um, directly and not necessarily through some uh, some uh, basically an aggregator. Um, so that's that's why you would choose to go to Amazon and publish there and distribute there directly. Um, some other platforms, maybe Kobo, for example, is some uh, 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 a retailer that a lot of other uh, a lot of users choose to go to directly, but Amazon probably is the biggest one. Um, if you're going directly to a store, then it's fairly simple. Uh, there is a certain percentage that the store is going to take from the digital list price that you give. The book when it's uh, it's bought by a, a reader and and that's it. So if you go to an aggregator, what is that you're going to gain from that aggregator? That you're going to manage all of these different channels uh, that's pulled into the aggregator. Uh, so basically, what I uh, told you before: the retail, the big retailers, the the subscription uh, based uh, stores, and the uh, libraries. All of them you can manage in one platform. You can going to sales, uh, going to see the sales figures. Maybe you're going to be able to promote as well. Um, so there are two ways uh, that aggregators work. Uh, so one of the ways that they work is like uh, Draft to Digital or uh, Streetly, for example. Um, so basically above the percentage that you are uh, paying from the digital list price to the store where they distribute to, they also take a cut from the digital list price. So for example, if you have a $10 book um, and you distribute to Amazon, uh, they have 35%, then it's, it takes down, you have uh, $6.5 and then uh, that aggregator takes 10% more, uh, which then you have $5.5 uh, uh, at the end. So that's that's basically how uh, an aggregator, which takes a revenue share uh, out of your earnings, that's that's how it's done. Uh, we at Publish Drive approach it a little differently. Um, what we do is we ask for a flat fee. Uh, for the services that we provide. We do not only provide the distribution part, we provide the promotion as well, and lots of other tools that can um, attract uh, attention or basically uh, drive up your sales. And um, for that flat fee, basically uh, you use uh, the platform in a way as if you would go directly to these stores. So we do not take out an extra uh, revenue share. We draw a line at a flat fee and it, basically it's just for the service. Got it. Okay. So, um, and, and then just on the bigger question, really it's a matter of whether the author, I think is, you know, how much time an author mm -hmm. has as to whether they might decide to, um, you know, it just keeps it simple. Maybe I go direct to Amazon and one other, and then I have an aggregation for everything else. Um, Ally recommends if you can, and if you have the time, and if you are going to use the benefit of going direct. So, mm -hmm. and I think that's a very important point, you know, mm -hmm. so one of the reasons for going direct is, is 
that you may have access to some of the promotional tools. Now, I know Publish Drive and, and other aggregators mm -hmm. also get mm -hmm. some promotional tools on some of the platforms as well. Mm -hmm. But um, also it's like the fact that they can hop in, do their own promotions, develop sure. a relationship with the store, uh, you know, and, and kind of mm -hmm. build up in that way, which you can do if you go direct. But if you're not doing any of that and you find that it's all kind of very flat, you might be better going with um, an aggregator who has those relationships in place exactly. and who will do that kind of work on your behalf. So it is an important question, I think. It's not one to be, when it comes to distribution, I think it's actually, well, the first one is about going wide. We definitely exactly. recommend going wide and not getting yourself tied to just one exclusive provider. Um, and then the second one is, you know, which ones are you going to go directly to and which ones are you going to, to use an aggregator for? So we're almost out of time. I just wanted to answer. Julie had a question about audio, uh, about the fact that it's costly and is looking for advice. Julie, mm -hmm. we will actually have a, a special on audio because that question uh, it would take another half hour to, for us to actually get stuck yeah. in on that one. It's not it's not one that we can we can do right now. I will say that one of the major costs um, for any audiobook is the narration. And exactly. so if you can narrate yourself, you you definitely have an advantage there. So, Dama, thank you so much for all the um, insight. I think just the clarity of, of all of that, I think, will be very useful to our poets. Is there anything you'd like to kind of add to finish or? I am really thankful that I could share all of this. And I know that there have been a lot of numbers that I mentioned before. And <laughs> I, uh, I I try to include them in show notes and some links that would clarify uh, for you uh, all of this information. And most of it can be found on a, a published driver's blog. So uh, make sure to check out. But Ally also has some great stuff about distribution on, on Ally's blog. So thank you so much. I would say at the end that uh, just as we started out, uh, be brave to distribute digitally. It's definitely the future uh, and go and be present at as many platforms as possible. And don't forget your own website. That exactly. is also a really good place to distribute your work and, and sell direct, which is a subject that we, we've we touched on before and will touch on again, I'm absolutely sure. But, you know, digital books can be sold online. It's a bit more difficult with POD, but certainly your ebooks and your audiobooks, no reason why you can't sell those directly on your website. Now, distribution doesn't it distribution makes your book available it doesn't necessarily get it into the hands of a reader and so you need to work out how once you've set yourself up what you're doing here is you're optimizing the availability of your book you then have the task of kind of connecting the reader to those links to, you know wherever they might find it yes they, you're hoping that they find find in a browsing situation but to be honest you need to be really quite proactive in terms of how you get them to buy your book so as poets are moving their um, events online it's really important that at the beginning in the middle and at the end of any online event that you would do that you put up links to where people can find your books and as you're going to be using so many different stores and you know going wide being everywhere as Dama said and in all formats if possible there's a lot of choice there for the reader so your website is probably a page on your website is probably the best hub that you can have where you can you know that can be your landing page and then from there you can guide them out to buy where if they like to buy on amazon if they want to you can encourage them to buy directly on your own website you can send them over to publish drive you can you know you can have a long list of links you can have a few links you decide essentially but what you need to think about very much it isn't enough to just put the books up there you're going to have to think about how you actually then bring the reader to the book but that i guess is a subject for another show and we'll talk about that again thanks so much to, to dama and thank you guys for being here again for our, our ask ally 
um, self-publishing advice salon. And as ever, we would love you, if you are not already, um, to join the Alliance of Independent Authors and become an ally. Um, and uh, if you want to find out any more about that, you'll find it at allianceindependentauthors.org. That, that link and all the other links and all of Dalma's figures, facts and figures, will be in the show notes for the podcast, which will, will be out on our blog on Friday week. So um, that's it for now. And we'll see you next week for another Ask Ally Salon. Till then, happy writing and happy publishing. Bye bye.